Hi guys, so today I wanted to continue with the budget practice portrait series. And this time, I wanted to take three secondary colors and black and white and do some mixing and then do a portrait with that. What I did, the secondary colors on a color wheel are purple, green, and orange. Um, and I just went and picked three versions of those colors that I found pleasing. So I've got a wild iris, and, the, and these are all in the April Barrel and expensive paints you can find at Walmart. Palm leaf and jack-o'-lantern, and then the black and the white. And then also what I wanted to do today is talk about pouring medium. And I've been using fluid matte medium for a few years in my paintings to make the paint more transparent and also to play around with locking down and smearing water soluble media or charcoal, things like that. Um, and I've been using Liquitex brand. It's uh, the artist grade. And for 16 ounces, it's you know $22 for that, which is spendy. So I wanted, along the lines of finding more economical ways to paint and practice our skills, um, to go along with the craft paints, I wanted to see if there was something I could use that was similar to fluid matte medium, but that was much less expensive. So I've heard of these pouring mediums. People use them to do acrylic pours. I do not do that. I haven't actually used it for that or before now. And... So what I did was I went and I looked at various places online and um, I found that like Jerry's Artorama had a couple of lower priced brands of actual fluid medium, which is made from acrylic polymer, which is what acrylic paints are made of. Um, but then I saw, but then I thought of the pouring medium and I thought, I wonder if that could be used in place of a fluid matte medium for the purposes of practicing. Um, my painting skills and my different techniques and trying, I want to try new things out and sometimes it doesn't go well. So if I can use less expensive materials for that, that that's really a great thing. So I found this Apple Barrel brand pouring medium at my local Walmart for $9.28 for this 16 fluid ounce. And that was the cheapest pouring medium that I was able to find. Michael's has uh, an Artist Loft brand that's a little more so I'm going to use this today and show you how I use it. So first thing I will do is we'll go ahead and do the paint mixing exercise to see what kind of shades we get from, kind of hues we can get from mixing um, these three secondary colors together. white on here. Make a light gray. Make a middle gray and a dark gray. A little darker. And then pure black. I'll put my orange over here, my green, and purple. And then we can mix each of these together to see what it makes. And obviously, if you mix different proportions and you get different kinds of colors. So I'm just mixing it till I get something that looks that looks nice. And then the orange and purple. And then if we've got orange and purple here, I'm gonna mix green into it. That's all three colors. Let's just see what that makes. If it's just if it just makes kind of a brownish. Yeah, it's kind of brown. I'll put that up here. Nice brown color. And then the usual routine is mix some white with the color, pure white. And 
Then put a little bit of black in it to make a grayish tint of that. A little more black to make a darker grayish tint of that. And a little more for the darkest. And if I lose my color, if it's not, if I lose the orange in there, then I'll put more orange back in so that it still has a kind of an orange tint to it. And then orange with the pure black. And now I will do that for each of these other colors. And I'll speed that up so you don't have to watch the slow part of doing that. Okay, so there we have it. We have the all three of the colors mixed together. That makes some really nice browns, umbery kind of colors. We've got the orange, the green, the purple by itself. Then we've got the orange and green, the purple and green, and then the orange and purple here. So now we will go over and I will demonstrate a portrait and we will use, and I will use the um, pouring medium. Uh, to demonstrate how I use that. Okay, so before I begin with the three secondary colors and doing the painting itself, I want to show you what I how I use that pouring medium in in place of a fluid matte medium. Because what I like to do is start out with a charcoal drawing warm up first before I go in and start painting. And so I'm just going to start out with some vine charcoal. And I'm going to go in and with a lot of, you know, as much energy as I can muster, I'm going to come in and with my vine charcoal and start putting in blocking in some dark areas and I like to rub it in with my fingers or a rag or a brush or something um, the other thing I forgot to say is that this is just this again is just the back up oh, that I painted on that side this is just a the back of a tablet um, pressed cardboard and I just put some a coat of gesso on it so here's a brush I'm gonna lightly brush and this kind of what this does is I want to mess up what I've done and go in and do it again and I want to do that over and over and the brush helps to kind of smush the charcoal into the surface to hold on to some of it. And I want to get her a little more angled. Mm 
I use my finger to smear it around. And that was still some vine. And now I'm going to take some compressed charcoal, which is darker and harder than the vine. I'm going with some of that. do this on paper the charcoal stays in on the surface much better than it does on gesso is what I've learned recently and so um, I'm kind of playing around with whether I want to do this on gesso from now on or stick to paper So with lots of energy, I'm going to go in here with an eraser. And take out some of this charcoal that I just put in. Um, and put in some of these, you know, some of the lighter areas. great way to warm up so I'm gonna usually I would do this um, a lot of times. I would go in, take it out, go in, take it out. But for purposes of the brevity of this video, I'm going to go ahead and skip a couple of steps. And now I'm going to come in here with my a charcoal pencil. And I'm going to make some different kinds of lines with this. Still keeping that loose, that loose energy. Just keeping it loose and then I'll smear it in again with the brush and maybe go in again with the vine charcoal
and the eraser again a little bit more Energy, energy, energy. Okay. So I'll stop there. And so the next thing I would, the way, what I would use the fluid matte medium for normally is to create some um, texture and lock some of that down, but instead I'm going to use the apple barrel pouring medium. I'm just going to put it a little bit into a can because it's quite thin. And then using another craft brush, so this is just um, another one of those inexpensive Artist Loft Michaels craft brushes, and I will get some of that on my brush, some of that pouring medium. And I'm just going to brush, so I'm kind of globbing it here. I'm just going to use it to create some smears. And marks. with it. And if it gets too muddy, I'll rinse it out. I didn't mean to blob that on there. It's because I want to keep some of the some of the you know the charcoal marks and the texture that I've created with it without I don't want to smear it all out. So I'm just gonna very gently because it's just another um, layer of of, of texture and marks and interest underlying underlying the painting when I go in and do the painting. So I'm not necessarily not really covering the whole thing. I'm just loosely and I'm not getting you know detail-y with it just just little touches here and there like that and then that will dry glossy yes but those marks will be locked down then and, and stay so they'll kind of be a part of the underlayment of the painting the other thing I also do after that, and you can let that dry first. Sometimes I will. Usually it dries pretty quick, so I don't have to wait too long. But I will take then take some gesso. Use your inexpensive um, gessos that I talked about last time. Or you could even use white acrylic paint. I could use some of the white craft paint too, but... I like the texture of the gesso. And with that, I will come in then and I will do the same thing with the same craft brush. I will, in a very scratchy, scrumbly way, I will um, put in some of the, the lighter areas with, with this gesso.
for again some more uh, some other textures some different marks And I'm not trying to make this look like her. I'm just using it as a reference a jumping off point. It's okay if it does look like her, but it doesn't, that's not what I'm going for. Take too long doing this for economy of time. There we go. Okay, so then I would um, then I would want to let this dry completely before I went in with paint. So we will go in with paint after this after this has dried completely. Okay, so we're ready to start. I'm ready to start demoing how I use this pouring medium, this inexpensive apple barrel pouring medium with the apple barrel paints. So I've got my green, my purple, my orange, my white, and my black on my palette, and I put the, the pouring medium into this can because it's so liquidy. And I'm just going to be dipping my brush into the pouring medium and then into the paints to thin them out and make them more transparent. For brushes, I've just grabbed a handful of the inexpensive Artist Loft craft brushes, the, the white ones that are semi-soft. And then I also have this Simply Simmons brush. Simply Simmons are very inexpensive. They can, they, you can buy them at Michaels, you can buy them at Dick Flick. Um, they're great, really inexpensive paint brushes. And I've put this one onto a skewer so that it could be longer so that I can paint stretched out. I want to stay as loose as possible so when I hold my paintbrush far on the end I can I can maintain that looseness and I don't tighten up as much. So I'm just going to mix as I go. So I'm going to start out with some of the purple and green and orange all three colors and try and create that kind of brownish color again and put a touch of black in there because it's not very dark. So I want a darkish color to go onto the darker areas. And see, I, see how you can, how this paint is really transparent. You can see what I've drawn underneath there. So that's that wonderful pouring medium creating transparency. So I'm gonna put this transparent oogie kind of brown, it's kind of a muddy, orangey muddy color into the shadow areas of the face first. And into the hair as well, making sure that I remember to dip my brush into the pouring medium to keep that paint nice and translucent. Just kind of getting that, creating that edge on her face. And I love the, the, the charcoal under here. And part of the wonderful part about making the paint so transparent is seeing those charcoal marks. And so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna paint over the entire thing. I'm gonna leave 
you know, some of this out here as as just part of as just the background charcoal color and I'm not gonna mess around with that too much because I want I want that to be part of the composition. So now okay I'm gonna go in here on the neck first and get these shadows in. And then I want to change the color up a little bit. And so I'm going to put in some more purple into it. But I'm going to keep, and I'm going to also knock down the value a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of white into there because I don't want the value to be quite as dark as the, the color I was just using. Because now I'm going to come in here to these cheeks and put in some of this this shadow that's going on and it's a little it's not quite as dark as the other the other shadow in the shin shin chin shadow and again i put it in the into the into the pouring medium to get it put a little bit up here because it's slightly a lighter value. I'm going to come over here, put this in because that's slightly a lighter value as well. Side of that nose. Anytime I notice that it's starting to get too opaque, then I can go ahead and mix in even more pouring medium to thin that to thin that out and make it more transparent. And we've got this kind of shadow here on her cheek that's just very slight. And it's kind of a triangly shadow there. And I'm going to bring that pinky purpley color down here into this part of the neck. And over here, see a little bit of darkness. And I'm also going to put it over here. And then I can paint a lighter color on top of that too. So now, and then actually I could put that and a little bit into the hair too. More pouring medium. For this kind of lighter bit next to that dark bit. And same with over here.
So I'm gonna correct that. That cheek, a little too wide, I think. Put some brown back in there. Trying to look around the camera here, it's a challenge. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is lighten this up even more, but I wanna change the color up again. So I'm gonna take that same brown color, which was all three colors mixed together. And I think I wanna go a little green, more green and see what that looks like. And then I'm going to put pouring medium, a lot of pouring medium into it. And I'm gonna put a bunch of white in there because I want it to be quite light in value. So a lot of this is um, just as I'm going, mixing and experimenting, and then I will try it out too. I'll put it up here and see, yeah, that's about what I want. I was afraid it would be a little too dark, but that is good. And then lots of pouring medium into it because I want it to be translucent. I wanna see, and I, and I keep saying that because it helps me to remember too, because I will get going on a painting and I will space off and I will forget to do certain things and so if I talk out loud about it a lot then I remember better. So I'm just going to paint this into this lighter area of her head and also um, put a, even more pouring medium into it. I want it to be super super see through as I come down across this nose bridge here because I want to still see that purple, purpley pinky color underneath. I want to see that so that's the beauty of doing this. I want to see that. Oops, I want to see those um, under colors that I've already put on. Then I'm going to come down here in the neck and put some of this lighter color down in here. <clears throat> Go into that shoulder. Over here onto this shoulder. And I'm going to take some more of that brownish color. Oops, that was white. As long as this is pretty is dry, then I'm going to do this to transition that so it's not a hard, hard line. More of this pink down here. Actually, that would be down there low on her neck. That would be more of the brown. Oops. And even a, that greener shade of brown that I created. And I can switch to a 
wider, flatter brush too. To put in. And since I've got this color on my brush, I'm just going to go in here and lay in some bits of it all over the place because that gives some continuity to, to the whole thing and a little bit of everything everywhere. Okay, this is getting hard for me to see because <laughs> there's sunshine coming through one of my windows and it's now causing a problem. I need to wait for this to dry a little bit. Hopefully that helped a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush, a round, a smaller round brush, and I'm gonna come in with some of that purpley color. Well, the lighter. I need to make it lighter. So I went away, so I'll turn the light back on. How are we? Oh, now the sun came back. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Sorry about the whole lighting issue. She's got these tendrils of hair coming in front of her face. So I'm going to use this pinkish color to kind of put in some of those just for a nice, a nice effect. Okay, then I'm going to take black into that brownish color that I mixed with all the colors together to darken it up to do Do the eyes and I'm trying to keep this loose and not um, get too um, detail-y because I want it to be expressive and I want to take advantage of this nice translucency and layers and I want to keep that so I'm putting some more of this pink in here to soften up and put a little more shadow along their forehead there and along this hairline.
my eye will jump around and I will notice things and then I will, you know, go take care of them because I just kind of take care of what I notice when I notice it. Sun's coming back in. Let me turn this light off. See if that helps a little bit. That's better. Then I'm going to take care of this mouth a little bit. And I want the lips to be kind of the purplish color. Soften that shadow a little bit. I want to have transitions between those lines, those value lines on her face. So I want it to be, I want, you know, I want it to be, I'm going, I want it to be a little bit dramatic, but I want to make sure that it's not too harsh because I'm not going for graphic design here. I'm going for, um, um, drama but a more of a fine art look to it so now i'm going to go back in under her neck because i just noticed that and it looks i'm going to put some black into this brown color get that a little bit more dramatic of a shadow there. And then transition it. And the shadow over here looks a little bit too um, squarish, too hard edge. So I'm going to break that line up a little bit. And just don't want this to be too solid down here. So. Breaking it up with rough strokes to put in so you can see, you know, see the strokes and it's not too um, not too flat. But I don't want a lot of attention down here, so at the same time. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get too detailed down here because I don't want this to be the focus. I want all the focus to be on her face. Putting some of the pink down in here. A lot of this just going back in and back in and back in. Until you get it the way you want it. Still using lots of the... And I can't see very well, so I'm trying to do this half blind.
I've got her shoulder up higher than it is in the picture. And I think that's part of the problem over here on this side. So I have to figure out a way to compensate for that. I have to figure out, okay, then where is her neck in relation to her shoulders? Over here, it seems okay. If I lower that down, then that helps a little bit. But that means I'm gonna need to cover that up with some gesso and then um, put in some charcoal so that it d doesn't look like I changed the line there. some kind of purple color here. Let me put in. For variation, if it looks good, it looks nice. Okay, and there's a hard edge here on the side of this lip. So I'm gonna fix that. Just more of the brown with that with black mixed into it. Trying to finish up these eyes. Moving on to the nose. With some of the brownish color. I might do some of that greenish brown. And just trying to loosely get in this shadow. Get the highlights on the nose.
And then moving back into the nose. Oops, need more. Uh, well, the acrylics do, these the acrylics do dry darker, so it's not a huge deal if I put it in a little too light. And I should probably switch back to a bigger brush because this is showing lots of little little brush marks, making lots of little tiny brush marks. I will switch back to a smaller flat brush because I want to go up into the eyes here and put a little bit of a lighter value. Up in here. I'm going to put little highlights in her eyes. And a little bit lighter value than the bottom of her of her, of her irises here. for some added depth and reflection. And then I'm having a hard time seeing that nose, but let's try and just finish up these nostrils a little bit. Too light. Adding in another color for more um, depth. Oh yeah, and I forgot about that shoulder. Okay. 
little bit more light here. And I will often go in and wipe something out with my finger. And it doesn't always obliterate it. Sometimes it, what I'm looking for is just to soften it out. So, like with everything, I could play with this all day long, but I don't want this to take forever, so I'm going to try and, so I'm going to not try, I am going to wrap this up. Pretty quick. Softening out those lights a little bit. Just darken under that nose a little bit. Forget the the uh, medium. Okay, so I think that's good enough. I think that is demonstrates the, let me turn this light off again, see if you can see it better. 
there we go, that's a little better, demonstrates what you can do with the cheap craft paints and the cheap apple barrel pouring medium and how you can create <clears throat> translucency and layers using those products and not having to spend a lot of money. So the other thing that I want to do that I guess you guys don't need to see me do this, but I did this correction over here. To the shoulder so I'm going to put gesso in here and I will transition the gesso up into here to create a smooth so it looks um, so it transitions well so it doesn't look abrupt and then I can even put some up in here, you know, so that the eye notices other bits of gesso and doesn't, you know, freak out because that's new gesso down there. And I'm just, you know, flicking it on because I don't want it, I want it to look I want it to look like it was, you know, part of, part of what was already there. There we go. And uh, then that way I can go back in with a little bit lighter of the light, the light color that highlight color. And put that back on. And then when that gesso is dry, gesso is dry. It's not dry yet, but when the gesso is dry, I can come back in and make some, you know, charcoal marks. To, uh, to hide the fact that I made a correction over there. So, okay, now I'm gonna see if I can zoom this or grab my phone and get closer to the painting so you guys can see a little bit more closely. But hopefully you can see um, the transparency that was created. So there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and got something out of it. And if you've got some cheap craft paints and you want to pick up some of that apple barrel pouring medium, give it a try. And I'll see you guys next time.